Hello everyone, this is Jose from macrepis.io and in this video I'm going to show you how to make deployments of fast API applications with Render. Now Render is probably the easiest way to deploy a fast API application and any other kind of application for that matter. All you need to do is tell Render what is the command needed to build your application, which in our case is going to be the command required to install the Python dependencies and then what is the command needed to run the application. That's all you need. So you can use the same deployment model to deploy your Flask and Django applications or any other applications that are not built with Python as well. You're going to see it is very simple. And here's the thing. I think Render actually meets the requirements needed by most applications out there, like 90% of applications probably. Like most of us are not actually building applications at the scale of Uber, Facebook or Netflix. Most applications don't need complex infrastructure that needs to scale to millions and millions of users concurrently. So for those applications that only need to handle a few hundred or thousand users concurrently, Render is perfectly fine. If you're new to DevOps and don't have experience setting up an AWS or Azure or GCP account and all the infrastructure that comes with it, I recommend you use something like Render as your first deployment model. Now, I'm very excited to share this tutorial with you. How to deploy fast API or Flask or Django applications is one of the most common questions I see on all kinds of forums. So hopefully this video is helpful for you if you have those kinds of questions. And what I would like you to do is at the end of the video, if you have something you can deploy, go ahead and deploy it and share your application with all of us. That's a great way to share your progress, to share what you're doing, to build in public and to get users to interact with your applications right away. Right, that's all for the introduction and now let's get on with it. All right, so we are going to deploy this code here from short tutorials. If you come to the repository, there is a folder called Fast API Render. Now, if you come inside here, there is a pipe project configuring the dependencies we need for the application and some metadata about it. And we have the log file for poetry here as well. And then we have the server.py file that implements the Sava. And to show you what the code looks like, I'm going to show you from the terminal. So um, the first thing you would do is you clone the repository and you go into the folder. So I'm here into the fast API render folder of the repository. And the first thing we're going to do is to install the dependencies. So poetry install. And that is everything up to date. And then we activate the environment. So poetry shell. And then we run the server. So ubicon server server reload. And that is the server running. Now let's go and check out the fast API page here the documentation for the api to see what it looks like and so we have two endpoints one of them retrieves a list of orders imagine this is an orders api and so we have a bunch of orders here you can you can tell i've been testing before so these are the orders i've placed and we can place new orders here so let's say this um the product this is a new order and request 10 items of that so we place the order uh, comes back with a 401 response here and the representation of the item including the ID and so if we hit the list endpoint again we have the item here at the end the new item so that's the AP, that's that's the application super simple looking at the code to give you an idea of what it looks like what we have is a SQL alchemy model here for the order we have the base declarative class this is done with SQL alchemy version 2 and I'm going to release a series of tutorials on SQL Alchemy 2 very soon. If it doesn't make sense now, it will make it will make a lot of sense after the tutorials. What we have basically in SQL Alchemy 2 is we, we have the ability to specify the type of the columns using type annotations in Python. And so we have this mapped annotation here that helps um, SQL Alchemy infer the type of the column and so on and so forth. There's a lot going on here and we will break it all down in tutorials later. And then what we're doing is we're creating the connection to the database. So we are uh, checking the case if we have an environment variable, which we're going to do on render. And if you don't have one, we're going to use SQLite in a local file. Of course, I highly recommend you don't do this in, in a production application. Check if, if the environment is there. If it is not there, stop the application right away. Don't put defaults because things can go south very quickly that way. We're creating the columns or, or the tables, all of them at the same time. We create a session maker factory, like session factory. 
uh, we're, put, we're putting some fixtures in the database if the database is new, if it is fresh and doesn't have any data. So we're checking if the table is empty like this. So if nothing comes out of that query, we uh, insert the fixtures in the database. And then we create our fast API application. We have a, a few schemas to represent the order um, as, it's, as it's going to be uh, transferred over the wire on the API. And then we have the listing endpoint and the create endpoint. So the fast API stuff should make sense if you followed the fast API tutorials I've done in the past. The SQL Alchemy part will make sense once we make those um, SQL Alchemy tutorials that will come out very soon. So this is the application. And what we're going to do on render is we're going to create a connection with the repository here to configure the deployments. So we're going to make the deployments from this repository, right? So the first thing I'm going to create is um, a database because I want to run this on a Postgres database. We could use SQLite as well, but if you're using the free plan on render, then the instances are ephemeral. Production instances are ephemeral as well, probably. And so the file system is ephemeral. It doesn't, it doesn't persist. So you want to have a dedicated service to store your data. And that's going to be Postgres here. We're going to name this, um, let's say orders test, for example. And the name of the database is going to be orders. And the user is going to be test. Th these are random values here. Just for illustration, pick up the ones that make sense to you. Um, and then we're going to get the free plan. So we're not going to pay for that. And that's all. So we create the database. And now that is in create a status. Now at the same time, we are going to create the web service. So we're going to come here to another tab. And we're going to configure the service. Now, if you log in to render, if you've registered with your GitHub account, then the GitHub account is already connected to render. If that's not the case, you will have to create a connection. Um, you will have to authorize render to access a specific account or repository on GitHub. In my case, I already created a connection with this repository. If you don't have that, what you do, you, you configure GitHub. In my case, it, it is connected with a couple of accounts and organizations I belong to on GitHub. So in my case, it is already connected to my account. So I only have to go to configure GitHub if I want to give access to more repositories so I have to show you what it looks like right so this is the page where you configure access in this case for render and so you can give access to all your repositories don't do that select a specific repository so here you can search for the repository you want to give render access to and that's it you select the repository click save and close the tab and then when you come back to this page you will be able to select the repository you want to connect to for this application deployment. So in this case, short tutorials, we're going to connect. And then the name of the application, short tutorials is good here. Um, configure the runtime is going to be Python 3 for us. Um, all the runtimes will have different configuration. We're going to deploy from main in this case. So automatic commits to main are going to trigger deployments in this case. The source code here is because we have multiple applications in, in the in the repository here. So this is my tutorials repository. We're going to deploy specifically from fast API render, which is what we have the example. So we paste that here and then we are going to configure the build command. How do we install the dependencies? So because we use poetry, what we're going to do is we're going to say pip install upgrade poetry and poetry install and that's our build command and then how do we run the application so in this case we're going to use ubicon so ubicon server colon server we're not going to do the reload thing here because we're not uh, we're not going to be watching the files but what we want to do is configure the port this uh, the host it's going to listen on all ips it's not going to run on the local host anymore and listening to collect to connections from the from the local network it's going to be a public service and we are going to make it free as well and that is all the configuration we need here for now uh, we just need the database uri so the database is already created is available now we have access to the credentials and the connection url so that is going to be the internal uri okay you don't need to have the external here 
so this is going to be db URI and this is the URL now one thing I need to tell you this is Postgres we're going to connect to Postgres using SQL Alchemy SQL Alchemy needs a driver to connect to databases so what I've done in in Py project we have fast API Ubicon SQL Alchemy and PsychoPG so that is the driver the latest version of the driver PsychoPG has actually gone through different versions this is actually the third version of PsychoPG but it's the latest one and it's the stable version and it comes with tons of improvements and, and cool things that we're going to explore in future videos so to tell SQL Alchemy that we're going to use this driver what we're going to do is we're going to change the URL like this we're going to say this is PostgreSQL plus PsychoPG and that is it then SQL Alchemy is going to look at the URI and it's going to say oh this is the driver so I need to import this library that's how it works so we deploy the web service now and here we follow the logs the deployment logs it's gonna take a while so install the dependencies that was the build command Okay, so the deployment finished, and now we can access the service on this URL provided by render to us. We can configure this also to use a custom domain, but in this simple tutorial, we can just use what uh, render gave to us. Of course, we would be able to configure this DNS and everything with other cloud providers to have a custom domain here. Um, but here, this is going to be sufficient. So we click on that, there's nothing running on the root URL of the domain, so we're going to go to the documentation page, and that's where we have the swagger. Now, remember we had two fixtures, so that's what we get here. The, that's the database initialized. We haven't done anything yet with it. And so if we create one order here, so if, we, if we place an order, that is going to be a new order, and let's say the number of items is five. So we send that to the server, we get the 201 has been created, so now it's going to go from two to three and that is the service deployed that's all it takes to deploy with render let me just show you how cool is this that it is connected to github it is configured to the auto deploy things when it gets a new commit to the main branch so let's go ahead and make a commit here we're going to change a line in the file let's open the server.py file let's just introduce one new line here and we commit that And now we push to the remote to GitHub. So git push origin main. And if we check on the events here on uh, on render, that has triggered a new deployment. So we can follow the logs again, and nothing is going to change because we just introduced an empty line. All right, and that is the service life with the changes. The other thing we can do also is we can trigger manual deployments. So we can specify a random commit we want to deploy. So that could be a commit in a different branch or something similar. We can do that from here as well and it will trigger the same process. And so there you have it. That's how to deploy with render. Very simple configuration, uh, very easy integration with GitHub, very simple deployment flow you can use the free version the only thing about it is that like you see here on the database the database is only free for a certain period of time then you have to pay a small amount of money to keep it running and the service it can be free but it will come down after 50 seconds of inactivity and then it really takes a long time to come back to life it's, a, it's like a deep frozen start if you can if you compare that to, with the with the cold start with uh, aws lambda that's actually not too bad in comparison to this. So if it is a service that you want to run for a serious hobby project or for if it is work or something, then you, you certainly want to pay for that. Um, just to say, I've used Render with a few clients in previous projects. It, it runs very well. It meets the requirements of conventional applications. So, you know, not, most companies are not building Netflix, Uber or Facebook. So you don't need a lot of custom infrastructure to run your website. It meets the requirements of the typical website very well. Maybe one more thing to say. If you go to the dashboard, you can click here and 
do this generate blueprint. So this is a configuration file, a render.yaml file that you put into your repository. You can use this to configure the deployment further and you know so that you don't have to go to the UI and configure everything manually so that you can replicate the same deployment model across all the repositories and services and so that you can drive those configuration changes from code. That's really the best way to do it. And one of the best ways to generate the template file is by using this functionality here. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. You found it useful. I hope you make deployments with render. If you make a deployment, let us know. Show the URL of your deployment in the comments to this video. Let us see what you're doing. Promote your projects here. And if you want me to make videos about all the related topics to this, please let me know and I'll see you next. Thank you. All right, so that was everything. If you like this video, please like, uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, make a comment. Um, if you're interested in learning about other topics related to fast API, Python, or APIs or web development, please uh, leave your suggestions in the comments. Share this video with anyone who might benefit from it, your colleagues, your friends or family. And if you want to learn more about uh, API and web development in general, or working with Python or API security, check out my website learn.microapis.io. I'm currently working on a whole series of courses about API and web development. I'm going to be uploading them very soon. And so if you want to learn more about these topics, check out the page. And if you have suggestions or you wish me to create courses on a specific topics, leave your suggestions in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Thank you so much and see you soon. Hello, 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 <coughs> hello, hello.